Welcome everyone to Everything Stock Charts. So let me take a second. I'm, I'm gonna, I pulled some slides from an old presentation that I've done. So some of the charts are a little outdated, but the, the concepts are still good. I wanna make sure that everyone understands what point and figure charts are, how they're useful, and why you should be looking at them. And this is this is just in a general context. I know Bruce Frazier occasionally has talked about this in the, in the, in the context of Wyckoff, which is great. But you can also use point and figure charts you know, for anything, really. And so I want to make sure you understand how they work and what they do. Uh, first off, in, in case you're new, point and figure charts are these charts that have a rising column of Xs and a falling column of Os. So as prices move up, um, basically, you don't go to the side, instead you just go higher and add more X's to this column. And, and then as prices reverse and go down, you add O's. And then when they reverse again and go up, you add more X's and so on and so forth. Um, the key point is that at, over time, you get a chart that looks like this, but this is, this is different from a regular bar and candlestick chart because the chart only expands to the right as volatility requires it to. And that's very important to understand. The vertical scale here is not necessarily um, uh, the same distance all the time as as time goes on. Um, there can be parts there can be parts of this vertical scale where the the um, chart will not expand at all because there's no volatility. So the shape of the chart is controlled by volatility. Another very important thing to understand when you're looking at a point and figure chart is that the way the chart's constructed will automatically filter out insignificant price movements. So movements where there isn't a whole lot of volatility and things are just going sideways, kind of noise, noisy kind of movements, those are automatically removed from PNF charts. And it's very important to remember that because what that means is that anything you see on a point and figure chart is automatically significant. It's automatically important because the insignificant stuff has been removed. So when you ever see a reversal, in other words, going from a column of X's to a column of O's, that is a significant change in the trend. Now, the word significant, I'll show you in just a second, that's controlled by the settings on the chart, and you can, you can change those. But in general, um, the, the default settings will do a pretty good job for you, and they will remove, again, these insignificant price movements. As a someone who uh, maybe you're used to looking at a bar or candlestick chart over time, like, like what Tom was just showing a second ago, um, your eye, over time, your eye develops a, a filter where you're automatically um, ignoring movements that might be, you, you consider insignificant or that might be ins insignificant. What you have to remember is when you're looking at a PNF chart, you have to turn off that filter. Every change in a PNF chart is already uh, deemed to be significant. So, how does a PNF chart relate to a bar chart? So I've got a little um, uh, analogy here, a mechanical analogy that hopefully will help with this. I'm not sure how many people have seen kind of a, an old lamp with an accordion kind of a, kind of a thing where you, you can stretch it out like this and then you can stretch it back. So this is the analogy that I have. The stretched out version of this is the bar chart and the stretch back version is the PNF chart. So, so see how that line there that I just um, highlighted is, is, is a, a corresponds to a metal bar in, the, um, in this accordion. And when the, when the um, accordion is stretched out, the lines, either this line or this line, those, they're, um, they're slanted. But then as the accordion is drawn back in and the, the lamp goes back towards the wall, that's, that slanted line becomes a vertical line. This is the, this is the effect that happens with PNF charts. So let me show you what I mean. Here is a, here's a regular line chart, a kind of a longer term chart, uh, in this case of Dell. And I've added some, uh, just automatically added some zigzags here to show you kind of where, where certain trends start and end. And think of the PNF chart as the collapsed version of that long chart. So there it is stretched out, and there it is collapsed. And let me show you, if, if we stretch this out one more time, and then we drop in a line just like we did before. So look at that trend line. That trend area right there, that downtrend, corresponds directly to this um, falling column of O's here on the PNF chart. So if you keep that kind of mental picture in, in mind, um, I th hopefully PNF charts will make a little more sense to you. The trends, any kind of trend that you see on a regular chart is represented by a vertical column on a PNF chart, right? So let me show you the uh, where you can get PNF charts on the stock chart site. Um, I'm going to come here to uh, the stock charts website, and if we go, I don't know, to the members page, uh, you can create a regular bar and candlestick charts with our sharp charts tool. But if you drop this down and you click on PNF charts, 
and type in a ticker symbol uh, and press enter. Now you're on the PNF workbench. And there are many other ways to get there, but this is, this is one of the easier ways. And here's a PNF chart of IBM. Uh, we can see some trend lines on this chart. We can also see some letters and numbers. The letters and numbers represent um, the, the point in time where a new month of the year started. So the numbers go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then A, B, C, which represents uh, October, November, December. And then the 1 represents January. And then here's February, and here's March. And so you can get a sense. As the numbers are really close together, it means that the, the, the stock uh, didn't have a lot of volatility and therefore didn't have a lot of changes in its point and figure chart. We can see here the distance between the start of 2017 and the start of 2018 is pretty pretty small, whereas, for instance, the distance between 2016 and 2017 was larger and so on and so forth. So that's what I mean by that the, um, the horizontal scale, the time scale on a PNF chart is not uh, symmetrical. It's not, it's not equidistant. It can vary. And uh, that, that's interesting. The other interesting thing, and I'll talk about this a little more, is these trend lines. Trend lines on a PNF chart can be drawn automatically by the computer, which is really nice. Uh, and they're always at a 45 degree angle. I'll also just as a side note state that PNF charts should always be drawn with blocks that are um, the same size, that, that are square, square. And if you ever see a PNF chart on some other site um, that has kind of rectangular or squished blocks, uh, run screaming. Those, those charts are not going to be too helpful to you. PNF charts, by definition, have to be square. Anyway, um, so at this point, what can we say about IBM? Just really quickly, we see that IBM is in an uptrend. It's in a rising column of Xs. This green X was added today. It's green because it was added today since the market opened. And uh, that's nice. But we can also see that IBM has fallen down a little bit. It's now down at 159.66. That's very close to reversing. If it falls below, um, in this case, it's going to be 158. Uh, then it will reverse into another column of O's. Those, those rules for when it reverses and when new columns are added are part of what's called the chart scaling. And at this point, in this particular chart, I've got a, uh, a traditional three-box reversal chart up. You can learn a lot more about all the different settings and all the different reversal methods by looking at the instructions or looking at the chart school article on point figure charts. Lots of other, uh, lots of other settings down here. You could take if those uh, month uh, letters and numbers bother you, you can take them off. For instance, other kinds of things you could do. So I just wanted to quickly show you the workbench, make sure you're aware of it, and I encourage you to um, to spend a little more time with it uh, when you get a chance. Um, just real quickly to finish up, um, I mentioned the trend lines. The trend lines are drawn at 45 degrees. Um, and then keep in mind, these trend lines are trend lines on a chart where each vertical bar is itself a trend line on a bar chart. So that means that a PNF trend line is really a trend of trends. That's kind of different and, and I think pretty significant. So it'd be really nice to know if the trend of trends is increasing or decreasing. Um, and, and the way you draw trend lines, again, the computer will do it for you automatically, but you just basically find a peak or a trough and you start drawing a 45 degree line from it until it runs into the chart again. So there's some more examples of that. One last thing uh, I'll mention to you, uh, chart patterns. Uh, PNF has many chart patterns and the really nice thing about them is that they're objective, they're not subjective. Um, bar and candlestick chart patterns uh, are a little bit in the eye of the beholder. One person's uh, rising triangle is another person's head and shoulders, so on and so forth. Um, PNF patterns, on the other hand, have very clear rules. Uh, there's no argument about whether they exist or not. And the, also, the computer can find them, which is really, really nice. Um, we actually will show them on the chart themselves, and we also have them in our scan engine. And so our scan engine can find them for you. But the, the other thing to keep in mind, again, is that PNF patterns are patterns of trends because the underlying X's and O's represent trends on the bar chart. So that's really interesting as well. Um, here's some examples of PNF patterns. And we can see, like, here's an example of a breakdown where the O's go below the previous column of O's. And at that point, that's a breakdown. There are many, many other kinds. And our chart school has all of these uh, described very clearly for you. And then finally, you can go on the free charts page or, you, or on the members page as well over to the predefined scanned area 
you scroll down on the predefined scans page and you'll find our automatically detected PNF patterns uh, for bullish patterns as well as for bearish patterns. And what's really interesting is you can kind of get a sense of the market just by looking at these. If, the, if there are lots of bullish patterns and, and lots of green here, then the market's doing well. If there are lots of red and not so much green, then, um, the, um, then that particular pattern is doing less well. So we, we've broken them up into bullish and bearish to help you with that. Uh, with that, uh, that's my introduction, my 15-minute uh, introduction to PNF charts. It, it's a topic that really deserves probably 15 hours. Uh, do we have any good questions that have come in through the chat so far? Uh, somebody was asking about uh, point and figure price objectives. Okay. So price objectives, you can read more about them in chart school, is a uh, older technique for determining a potential, and I got to underline the word potential, places that the, that the um, prices might go based on the history of the PNF chart. So there's a specific calculation that can be done on PNF charts where you, you take basically uh, how long a, um, it's been moving sideways on the PNF chart, and then you can use that to project. We see, for instance, on this one, a price objective of 63 going down. Um, I would say those objectives are wishful thinking in many cases. I've never really seen a whole, I've never seen patterns or, or actual stocks meet their objectives that often. And many of the price objectives are wildly above or below the existing price. Um, other people swear by them. So I guess your mileage might vary. And But before you use them at all, you really want to read the Chart School article explaining them. There are, by the way, several different kinds of price objectives. And you want to make sure you understand the calculation and decide for yourself if you're going to buy into the logic. Well, I believe that point and figure charts are a really good check on reality. So even if you're not necessarily a, a PNF aficionado, let's say that you are very interested in buying a, a chart that you've been looking at using regular bar and candlestick approaches, or maybe Tom's been yakking about it for a while. Well, a PNF chart can be a like a final little test. Um, if if you think everything looks good, but you look at the PNF chart and it's actually in a downtrend, like we see here, maybe also in a, a row of a descending column of O's, that might be a a, a, a warning sign, a, a thing to say. Oh, well, I'm not really necessarily going to pull the trigger on this until this uh, PNF chart starts to look a little better. How does it stack up against other indicators, the point and figure patterns? I I mean, personally, I haven't really studied it that closely. Well, again, I don't. A point and figure is not an indicator. It's a uh, it's a charting technique, and it's a charting technique that uh, removes noise. And so, if you're having trouble, um, you know, with bar and candlestick charts, kind of seeing the bigger picture of what's going on, uh, I think point and figure charts can help you see that bigger picture. Like the 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 way that they're constructed, by definition, will kind of get rid of that noise and let you focus in on the most significant price movements. But again, you, you have to consider every single movement on a PNF chart to be significant. That's not necessarily true on bar and candlestick charts. Uh, but the fact that, for instance, in this particular chart, which again is Boeing a long time ago, but um, the fact that this, this chart was in a downtrend um, is something that you, you can't ignore. That's a, a downtrend of the trends. So as each trend has, has, as each uptrend has tried and petered out, those uptrends have been the, the uptrends have been petering out at lower and lower levels. And so that's that's a fairly significant thing. And as I mentioned, point and figure charts are a big part of Wyckoff. And uh, Bruce Frazier also does a, a really good job of explaining them and showing them off. Uh, but don't be fooled. Again, they can be used for more than just Wyckoff. There you go. I can definitely see the benefits, especially the objective approach. I mean, you know, if it's you know, you hit a certain target, X goes in the column, you keep going up, you hit another target, and X goes in the column. It's not like, well, the volume was light or it, it's strictly looking at the price action and, you know, moving up. I, I see benefits, but for me and my trading style, because I am, you know, I do look at the pennies as far as, you know, where price support, where resistance is. For me, just using rounded numbers or percentages, it just doesn't work in my own trading style. And that's why I don't uh, talk about it much. But I definitely can see, you know, depending on your own trading strategy and style, how PNF could certainly be a great uh, a benefit to many. All right. Thanks, Chip. Appreciate you coming on. All right. Thanks, everybody.